It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our go. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. I'm Tom Papa. I thank you so much for joining us once again. We've got a good one for you today. We've got Phil Rosenthal. Yes! Phil is back. He has got a uh, uh, a mediocre bread. I gave him a mediocre bread, guys. I, I, you know, uh, it was a time thing. I was running. I, I mean, I, I planned it beforehand. I, I made it. All right, this is what happened. Uh, last night, I had a show at the comedy store, and right before I left, I was like, "Let me mix the the dough really quick. That way, I can." Uh, fold it and get it ready through the night and then it'll rest then it'll rise until the morning and then crank it out during the morning and then come here and and meet phil and i forgot and i already rushed the very first step which is called auto lease auto lease is when you first mix the bread the dough the flour with the water it's your first step you let that sit for like 20, 30 minutes and everything, the flour really soaks up the water and you're, it's a great starting point. It's a launching point for making really great bread. I was like, that doesn't really matter. Screw it. Does auto lease even mean anything? Let's just mix it. And then I'll throw the starter in and the salt, mix it all together, go to make my show. This never would have happened if I had remembered an hour earlier. Uh, So I did it. And while I can't completely say that that was the reason that Phil is leaving today with a flat bread, um, I think that's where I started to go wrong. Because everything else kind of, normally when I do that and then over the night and I come into the kitchen at seven in the morning, my three quart container is almost overflowing the, the the dough has risen so much that the lid is starting to slowly pop off and it wasn't uh, it was like three quarters high so I think that is where I kind of made the first mistake because everything else was cool I shaped it in the morning put it in the refrigerator it looked like it was forming a good shape and I put it in the other suspect at the very end could have been that the oven didn't get really hot enough I rushed it a little bit there. Like maybe it really just needed to get super hot because that's when you put in the dough and it just expands. If the heat is really, if you see on Instagram, you ever see like breads just exploding in the oven, that's all heat, just heat. And I felt like I was a little behind on that. It wasn't horrible. I would give it, I would give it a seven. I would give it a seven. It smelled great. I got to give him warm bread. And look, Phil is like family. He's He's been on my shows before. I've been out to eat with him. He is uh, just a, a great, as I say at the beginning of the interview, he is the perfect guest because he is comedy and food all mixed together. Somebody Feed Phil is coming out tomorrow. It drops its fifth season, fifth season on Netflix tomorrow so he is the perfect guest because he's he knows comedy and he knows food the problem is he knows food and he's seen really great breads this isn't the first bread i've given him but you don't want to just give him give him something that's not a nine or a ten but he's like family sometimes mom you know really nails it at christmas and some years it's just off a little bit you still love them. It's still good. They still had you in mind when they made it. So hopefully he uh, he seems like a kind guy. But I also suspect that he might uh, be secretly. You can't be. You can't travel the world and know all of these foods so well, and experience all of these things, and not have a different metric for what's good and what's mediocre. So. Thankfully, the conversation that I have with him is amazing. It's great. It moves. 
He's got so many great stories. It really, he really is the perfect guest. Uh, we had to squeeze it in because he's got the launch of the show coming. So I, I, we could do a part two. Maybe that's what we'll do. There was a lot more to get to. We'll get, we'll get him back. We'll have part two. Not just for you so you can hear more, but also for me so I can redeem myself. I was thinking about this the other day. You never want to give food to somebody, anything you make, just for your kids, for yourself, for your partner, for a friend. You never want to give food away that has to come with an explanation, an excuse. It's The crust is a little hard. It's not as sweet as I thought. It's not as... <laughs> you just want to give it to them silently this is for you and watch them devour it then you know you nailed it so don't let my my fragile ego get in the way of what is a great episode this episode today is brought to you by tompapa.com <laughs> that's right i am touring all around the country i'm doing a whole bunch of clubs from now through the summer because I am working out stuff for my special that's going to shoot in September for the Netflixes. So I am going to be bouncing around and it's going to be loose and fun and a great way to do some shows. I've also got some other bigger shows like at the Borgata and places like that. And then of course the fall tour, the Wilbur in Boston. I've got Orlando. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Also in the short term, Coming up at the beginning of June, I've got a casino in Iowa. I'm going to West Virginia. I'm going to uh, some other place around there, uh, Phoenix. So I've got a lot of dates. Go to TomPapa.com and get all those, and we'll see each other live and in person and kiss on the lips. All right. Let's enjoy a conversation and you, you you hit me up on social media when you see or hear Phil get this bread let me know what you think was he disappointed was he happy I bet he'll text me later and say he was happy I hope he does he's a great guy enjoy and then go to Netflix tomorrow and enjoy somebody feed Phil season five dropping on the Netflix enjoy I baked you some bread. Thank you. It's not my best bread. Goodbye. But I feel like we're like family. <laughs> we and are. you know, so like... I can, so I can complain? You can complain. Am I supposed take to a eat look this at it. bread? No, you can take a look at it, though. All right. It just came out of the oven. Ooh, it's warm. It's warm. Everybody likes it. It just this. has more wheat, so it's a little heavier. So it's a little flat. By the way, this is a 20-pound bread I'm holding. It's no, good it's bread. It's beautiful. Smell it. Listen, I can... <laughs> it's got a little crackle. It's got a little oh, crackle, crackle. Oh my god! Thank you. It'll taste great. It's just I like it when it comes out beautiful and a little it is larger. Beautiful. Well, your family. So I figured, you know, sometimes mom nails it, and sometimes mom doesn't nail and it. And we love mom anyway. <laughs> we love mom anyway. And you know, you are really the perfect guest because this is comedy and food. Yeah. And you are really one of the very few who combine both of them in a huge way you too mister i know that's it we We're should brothers. just do this together why not all the time no i love it uh there's a lot of food shows that came before that were very serious mm -hmm. some of them still are yeah and i think people like it i think they like you know they, they there are a lot of cooks out there who yeah. take it seriously i happen to not be one of those people <laughs> i i really think that food is this marvelous break in the day right for fun yes <laughs> Exactly. Like li life, not that I'm complaining, but life can be so hard for yeah. so many. And I've seen around the world that food is not only this break in the day for them, but it's the only nice thing in the day for them. Right. The only mm -hmm. chance to have some enjoyment in their life. It's so sad yeah. when you think about it. So have fun with this. Yeah, it's a toil. It's a toil. And yeah. then you get to, yeah, then you get to just enjoy it and eat it. Now you've got the next season. I can't believe it's season five. Yeah, coming up. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Seasons you. five of anything is just insane. I'm just so happy. And and we filmed uh, 10 episodes, so there's going to be a season six, they just said. Oh, no way. But yeah, I mean, I knew there would be because we filmed enough for 
too. So oh, they, and they just, just said put... today that, that that season six is coming. Oh, that's so great. So nice. So May 25th? Is the season five, season and then five. in the fall will be the sixth Oh, it's season. exciting. And I have and to tell you, Phil. Yes, please. I have to tell you, uh, it is sticky. There are people, when I, because I do this and, you know, there's food, I'm in the food orbit. Yeah. Uh, and from comedy people and just my families and all those kind of things, people really... Like your show, there's a. Oh. I mean, I I don't. You don't need that endorsement no, going into your so sixth season, but you can tell when things are like, hey, it's but, happening. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, took a while, but I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful to COVID. Mm. <laughs> people, <laughs> Thank you, COVID. <laughs> people actually, they traveled through the show when right, they couldn't travel. Right. I I didn't know how it would go. I actually thought maybe you don't want to be reminded that you can't go out. Yeah, but I guess it was escapism. Totally. You know, the rumor that I spread is that Netflix <laughs> started COVID. <laughs> Who had the most to gain? <laughs> Netflix. Netflix and Postmates. They, they can handle it. They, yeah. They're dealing with everything else <laughs> from all different fronts. So they'll be okay. I love them. <laughs> I think we're the top food and travel show in the world because of Netflix's reach around the world. Oh, uh, yeah. We go to places. I'm, I'm in places that I never dreamed that I would be, and people stop me on the street because they really? all have Netflix. It's, it's, it's in every country on wow. earth except for maybe North Korea and China. And I hear even in China, they, they kind of get it illegally uh -huh. somehow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Good for them. If you could break into North Korea, that would be an episode. Didn't, uh, what's his name to it? Um, um, I know, the, I have a basketball friend. player. I think so. Right? He got well, in there. He, he's his buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I blanking on his name? Uh, me too. Who? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Who seems completely normal in every other way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Just... Where are we going this season? Oh, very exciting. You ever been to Oaxaca in Mexico? No. It's the most colorful, beautiful, delicious place you've ever been. Really? And it's three hours from where we're sitting. It is? It is. You got to go. Really? You like Mexican food? I love Mexican You know where food. Mexican food is really good? Mexico. Oh, I was thinking Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> it's so... It's the gastronomic and cultural center of Mexico. I thought it was Mexico City. No, yeah. it's this smaller city called Oaxaca City Oaxaca. in the county, in the state of Oaxaca, right. which goes all the way from the ocean all the way inland. And it's a spectacularly colorful, beautiful. I can't wait for you to see it. Really? Yeah, that's the first one out of the gate is that one. Then we go to Maine. Mm -hmm. Also gorgeous, gorgeous in a different way. Love Maine. We love Maine. I went to the diner of my life in oh, Maine. I yeah. wonder if you've been. Do you know Biddeford, Maine? No. There's something called a Palace Diner. It's uh -huh. an old railroad car. Oh, wow. And it was an old railroad dining car. So it's you walk in it and oh, you're in a little 15-seat diner. These great chefs from New York, from Gramercy Tavern, took over the diner, left the menu the same, meaning <laughs> tuna sandwich, French toast, no. pancakes, omelets, <laughs> burger deluxe. And elevated them in a chefy way That's to make them great. spectacular. So it's the best wow. comfort food you've ever had in my life. It might be one of my favorite restaurants I've ever been to. Oh my God. I say to the guy, this is, you don't know how great this is. He goes, well, the bar is very low. Meaning that this <laughs> because, type of food is very low. I said, no, it's the opposite. Right. The bar is very high because we all grew up on this food. Right. We know we're all experts in that food. <laughs> yeah. So when you have the best friggin' pancakes you ever had, <laughs> that's like a big day. That's amazing. Where in Maine is that? Biddeford, Maine. Where's Biddeford? Biddeford from is Portland, maybe say. a half hour away from Portland. Okay. We spend the majority of our time in the show in Portland, uh -huh. but then I have relatives who have a farm in, mm -hmm. in uh, Wiscasset, and, and we go there, and I have to herd sheep. They even wanted me to shear a sheep <laughs> to see some of that. This is like... That's a, the classic Phil. That is the... That, that is the the comedy of the of the travel show. I guess it's the food is great, but seeing you <laughs> having to eat something wiggly or chase yeah. after something hairy, yeah. <laughs> or, or row through something weird. <laughs> I asked this man, who's a relative, how did you get in our family? This is not who we are. You know, when I when I want lamb, I uh, you know I'm on I'm on Postmates, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. Let me uh, let me back just backtrack for a second. Please um, talk to me about Mexico. Yes, because we have this, and I've I've had some um, some great chefs from the area down there. But I I there is this disconnect from America from the stories we get in America of okay, you can you can 
you know, other than going to the resorts, other than going to yeah, like you know, Cabo, Cabo, Cabo is, yeah, is yeah. like a, a suburb of LA. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And you see everybody from LA. That's there. right. And uh, but then you see the other places like yes. you're talking about, and yeah. it's like, well, those seem like the real thing, Mexico That's right. City. I should be going there. Yes, you should. I should go to the temples and all the yes. rest of it. And then you see reports on on uh, on on our news that if you'll get there and you'll get out of the taxi and uh they will kidnap your children and they right. will hide and you they will hide you in a cave somewhere and uh, happy vacation to you I, I went to mexico city but this is the first episode we did in mexico and i was nervous about the very same thing because of these stories yeah i get to the hotel it's a saint regis hotel on what looks like fifth avenue uh-huh. uh very modern beautiful city with crazy beautiful skyscrapers of real architectural design not yeah. like now where they just throw up yeah. you know just these glass right just tubes yeah, yeah the new york matchsticks this is like real architecture really beautiful real design right i'm gonna say better mm -hmm. than what we have in many cities yeah i get out they have a security he says hello i'm your security i said thanks he goes uh, just want to tell you you don't need security I said, really? I, he says, you see the people walking? And I look on the street and there's people walking like you would see on Fifth Avenue in yeah. New York. I said, yes. He goes, do they have security? Do you see security? I said, no. <laughs> I said, what if I want to run in the park over there uh -huh. in the morning? He goes, you can see the park from here. Yes. Do you see the people running? Yes. Do they have security? No. <laughs> You don't need security. Yeah. He stayed with me the whole time, but uh -huh. I never needed him. It's true. Yeah. And I think if you go out at three in the morning in an empty part of town, in any place anywhere in the world <laughs> right. you're asking for trouble <laughs> right right so yeah. don't do that <laughs> go to if bed you go out in the day when there's people around your chances yeah. of being kidnapped are much much less <laughs> right and so that's what i thought yeah. i've never felt unsafe and now I've, I've been to mexico now a bunch of times and the point of my whole episode the oaxaca episode so colorful so beautiful so rich in culture every bite of food delicious all the people smiling and beautiful yeah loving sweet everything else is that we're goddamn lucky to have these people yeah. as our neighbors right it's the opposite of what some idiots right. say right in a in a vile yeah, racist horrible. prejudicial way right in a in a cheap effort to get votes yeah right to making them all an enemy and even though you know that they're whipping people up and they're calling them yes. all these horrible things and yes. you know what they're doing it has a slow effect it has a drip 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 effect on even though that's even people so, that can see what they're doing that's so dis that's what's so disgusting it's so gross it. so my job mm -hmm. is to show the other side yeah i'm not saying everyone is perfect right. and they're all angels and wonderful but not. who is yeah and welcome to la <laughs> look at this i think you'll think differently yeah. and that's the best thing about travel mm -hmm. is that it changes your mind yeah literally change your mind it does it opens your mind in a certain way it gives you perspective on yeah. your life at home mm -hmm. like you take stuff back with you that you can apply to your life at home after you've traveled yeah oh these trees are beautiful here in 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 this grove in paris look how we we don't have anything like and then i got home to washington heights where i lived <laughs> when i was 23 that was my first trip to paris i was marveling at how gorgeous it was yeah and then i walked down the street in washington heights and for the first time, I noticed the trees on our block. <laughs> That's what travel does. Right. Was there any place during the all these travels that you did feel like, let's get back in the van at any point? Uh, there was a dangerous moment, maybe, I heard about in Cape Town. It never mm -hmm. affected me. Uh -huh. We were doing a scene, and one of the PAs came in and said, uh... A van has gone around the block three times, and they are obviously checking out our production van, uh -huh. meaning all the equipment, the cameras could right. be ripe for the taking. Right. So maybe we go Skedaddle now. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That was right. a, that was the worst of it. Yeah. 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 But well, nothing's okay. ever nothing's ever uh, happened. Right. Oh, that's good. Yeah. The uh, cut to it's always your own. It's always your right. Exactly. <laughs> By the way. Got food poisoning once in all my travels. You know where? San Francisco. No. Of everywhere in the world. I eat street food in Bangkok. I yeah. eat in Saigon. I eat uh, anything that everybody gives me. I'm eating bugs. I'm eating whatever. 
San Francisco. <laughs> do you drink the water in all these places? Uh, I do what I'm told. Right. If they say, you know what, drink bottled water here, do right. that, and I do. But a lot of you know places that we go. Listen, I'm not. I'm not Mr. Adventure. I'm not Anthony. Brooklyn, right. Right. I'm, right. I'm. I'm, I'm I'm me, yeah. and I, I'm old, and I want a, I want a, <laughs> a, a hotel with a bed with a pillow, <laughs> right. and that's where I'm going. Yeah. I, I haven't reached a point yet where I'm in yeah. the middle of the desert with nothing. Yeah. I, I, I'm not that guy. I'm not going to Antarctica for fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're right, which is why watching it is cool, because you feel, I feel, like, oh, I could go there, too. Yes, I think yeah. that if people see... If that putz can go outside, I can too. <laughs> right. If he made it, right? I'm going to be okay. Yeah. So it's like a like a step down from Bourdain. Right. That, uh, I watch Bourdain and I go, he's amazing. I'm never doing that. Right. <laughs> but for some people, just yeah. getting off the couch is the adventure. Mm -hmm. They're not going one step out of their comfort zone. No. So my job is to get you right. that first step on the plane right just get on the plane yeah. just get right go go call a call a restaurant that you never called before during right. covid right how do we travel during covid why don't you try an ethnic restaurant in, right. in town postmates it yes and try something it's yeah. like traveling for the night I know. peruvian food it is amazing when you talk about the what, what our mindset was during covid yeah because i found myself uh sitting with my ipad at night and just looking, I, it just kind of came out of nowhere. I just started scrolling through beautiful Where could pictures I of Copenhagen. Oh, yeah. Just like looking, I'm like, what are their baked goods there? What is their bread like? Well, look at these places. Look at uh -huh. that hotel. Look at that. I mean, for a long time, <laughs> I spent a lot of time just like, it was like almost a vacation. It was, and I have heard that, that. They say that the uh, another very therapeutic part of travel is the planning. Is the planning? That's right. Yeah. And so now, are you really planning a trip? Um, not, not act. I haven't said it out loud to the family like we're going yet. But, but you're in my it mind, out loud to me and the I, yeah, listeners, yeah. So that's like a commitment. Yeah, I am planning it, but I haven't uh, told the other people that where they're going. <laughs> you, that's great. Yeah. I really want you to do that. Yeah. First of all, Copenhagen phenomenal place you're gonna go crazy yeah you got to go to Noma. tell me about it you're gonna you're gonna go to noma uh-huh you want to go there right? yeah because it's the restaurant of the world you, right you're gonna eat like stuff like, people plan their vacations just around when they can get in exactly so yeah. you'll do that you'll get in yeah i i might know somebody ah nice and and <laughs> you're just gonna see like like i took the family when we shot that episode uh -huh. my daughter who was maybe 21 22 at the time mm -hmm. after three days said i could live here Really? Really. Yeah. And they are used to what they're used to. Right. But it's such an idyllic community. It's so, they do everything right. The cleanest air, food, and water in, in like the world because they really care about it. Right. Imagine the Hudson River mm -hmm. with, with uh, swirly slides going into it for children. <laughs> oh, God. Right? Yeah. And people fishing the natural fish right. out of the clean water. Right. That's what life is like. Wow. Air so pure and clean. Food, every bite. Yeah. Like, they value it. Their bakeries look yes, insane. Yes, the bakeries are insane. It looks beautiful. How big is it? Not very. Yeah, it's looks... Not very. Yeah, it looks like... Is it like a... Uh, it's very walkable. Right. Very bike rideable. They right. all ride bikes. Yeah. It's, it's kind of an ideal society. Is there a place that like your daughter after yep. going through all this that you're like i could live here maybe not forever but i felt i feel that quite often because mm -hmm. we spend a week in each place uh -huh. i remember feeling it in lisbon mm -hmm. have you been there no spectacular i feel it maybe every time i go to italy yeah i know <laughs> italy you ever feel like <laughs> i know you were born like there yeah. in another life yeah oh. it feels so much like home and, yeah. and yet it is strange to mm -hmm. how we live every day here yeah but so comfortable and just feels right mm -hmm. remember your first trip to europe when you tried to buy something at two o'clock and you were like what what the hell why <laughs> right. is everything shut and yeah. you couldn't understand it. you got mad even i know what's happening and then oh they take time out yeah and shut down uh, siesta time mm -hmm. to enjoy the day what's that like tom what is that like what is happening yes. here right we can enjoy live like the this. day we don't we don't have that we're allowed to live like this yeah so that's the other beautiful thing yeah travel yeah you know i find 
uh, the break in my day is lunch. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's like the, the, the structure of a play. <laughs> right. All the action from the first act is building <laughs> to the act break, uh, right? The, yeah. the end of the first act. And all the action is going to come <laughs> from that in the second act. And so it's this lunch is the tent pole in the day. Yeah. And so I like to have a lunch with a friend. Right. Because it's something to look forward to in the middle of your day that breaks up your day that yeah, makes the day that's great. enjoyable. That is a great, that, you know, I've actually been thinking about that lately that I, my old focus has always been on dinner. Yes. And it's nice to go out to dinner. It's nice to do those kind of things when everybody's done. And yeah. if, you know, if your wife is working too, like that's the time you'll meet up and stuff. But really, when I would read Jim Harrison, he actually wrote a thing called A Really Big Lunch. Oh, I don't and, know that. Uh, yeah, he's great writer wrote for Esquire for years uh-huh. and all about food and he became diabetic and died too early but he was but so passionate and uh his whole thing was about the lunch like the lunches you could go longer you could drink you could just you could eat more things and still sleep at night yes <laughs> like that's because you fall asleep in the day <laughs> right because you do yeah. you nap a little yeah, bit yeah yeah the lunch is uh it should mean, yeah, be like the big showcase you ever work in a writer's room yeah. So we, I called my production company when we were doing Raymond, where's lunch? <laughs> right. Because it was the main preoccupation. First, where are we going to order from? Yeah. Second, where's that lunch already? And, and so, they start asking that question at nine. Of course. <laughs> yeah. More important than the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can't eat the show. And, and, you know, you're in this windowless room, it feels like. In the, we called it the veal pen. <laughs> right. And the only sunshine coming in is the menu. Yeah. And so you could order whatever you want. We all got fat. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was it was kind of paradise. Yeah. We had these dry erase boards on the wall for our story ideas. Uh-huh. We had more dry erase boards for where we're ordering lunch from. <laughs> what are the possibilities in town? What are the places that deliver? What are the places we don't like? What are the places we still have to try? <laughs> That's so great. Very important. <laughs> Very important. That was such a uh, uh such a I mean it's an amazing show and we've talked a lot about it. Uh, but I was thinking on the, my way over today, you know, you don't stop when you make something like that. And this was very personal when you made Raymond because it was a lot of it was your family. And it was like the things of your growing up and your parents and things. Are there stories in your head today? Take all of the pitching and making it and all the all the nonsense of of the struggle of making a show. Yeah. Or a film. Yeah. Or a book. Yeah, yeah out do you have stories that are present that you feel like you're getting itchy to tell every time i dip my toe into the sitcom waters again Mm -hmm. it gets cut off Uh and i'm running out of toes (laughs) i don't know what i don't know what the business is now of course i have stories you do and i've told you some of the right you know ideas that i've had I'm, i'm certainly happy to write a sitcom, mm-hmm. I don't want to run a show anymore. That's a young person's game. Right. And I have my gig now doing the yeah. other, which Got your show. I'm never going to give up as yeah. long as they don't fire me. I love this gig. I'm the luckiest guy you're ever going to talk to. Which, by the way, sorry to interrupt, sure. but which, by the way, is a very big story. You are telling a big story from the time when you were talking to your parents to you traveling, seeing your kids show up and your wife there is and, a sitcom and friends. Element. It is a, it, you are telling a story. I think that's I, I mean, what, I, I what hooks from, us. You're I not just showing from, food. No, I come from the world of sitcoms. Yeah. I understand, I guess, how to tell a story on television. Mm-hmm. And I'm using it in the service of everything else I love in life. Right. Family, friends, yeah. food, travel, laughs. Yeah. That's that show. Yeah. Right? Food's only part of it. You're right. Uh, food, I would yeah. almost say, is the, is the hook to get you in so I can deliver my bigger message. Yeah. Just like the message of love and family and understanding was at the center of Raymond, but if we didn't have jokes, nobody would watch. Right, 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 right. right. So, what right. was the question? Well put. Oh, other shows? Yes, other I stories. have many stories, yeah. but the business, do mm-hmm. I have to tell you how frustrating it is now? Yeah, it's... Uh, I it's, mean, people can't even get movies made because the movie business isn't there anymore. Big people with big names. Look at the movie that won this year. Mm-hmm. Coda. Yeah. You saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful little movie. Yeah. Uh, I think had it been, let's say, in the 70s or the 80s, mm-hmm. that was the stuff of movies. That was 
a lot of those types so of that movies. That kind of movie right. came out every month, it seems. That's right. What I'm saying is movies about people. Yeah. Not superheroes. Yeah. And capes and, and special effects. Right. Which seems to be the only thing now <laughs> I know. that gets put in a movie theater. I know. And if you don't have that, you're not making a movie. And the math behind it. Yes. It's can this make a billion dollars? They were showing the Johnny Depp you know the nonstop trial yeah and there was one watched. question there was one question uh i can't avoid it it just pops up yeah, on yeah. instagram and they said and you, about him being offered 220 million dollars to do another pirates that he turned down what and 220 million but that's the math that they're dealing with these things all make over a billion dollars so like that's what's moving the studio system so when people come along with coda yeah. It's not even like there's a, it's like no. it's a different business now. It is. And 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 the fact that it even won the Oscar yeah. doesn't seem to mean much or to them. Or move people. No. Right? Isn't that strange? It used to be, oh, you win the Oscar, you can add 50 million dollars to your box office because you won the Oscar. I right. don't know if that's true anymore. And the other thing we have to admit is that movie premiered on Apple Plus. Right. That's right. Not in a movie theater. No. But this is the stuff of what used to be movies. Yeah. I really miss it. I miss, like, they wouldn't I know. even make. I mean, you and I are old enough to know what a big deal a movie like, uh, uh, let's say, Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, God. Remember? Yeah, my God. Any of those. You were thrilled to go to the movie theater to see that. They wouldn't make that today. Yeah. That would be some, like, Apple Plus or Netflix little yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? I know. What is it? A, I a wonder... bank heist. Who cares? Yeah. It was so phenomenal. Even something like The Godfather, I don't think, yeah. would be made. No. No. And would people, do you think that people would, say, say the Tom and Phil studio mm -hmm. opened up and cranked out Godfathers and Dog Day Afternoons and got them in the theaters, would the public, would they show up and watch them? Uh, I... I have to think if it's good, they're going to come. Right. You know, it's not the it's not the form; it's the mm -hmm. content. I always say this. Yeah. People say, "Oh, you know, the four camera sitcom. Nobody wants to see that." What do you mean? Right. The people don't care how many cameras there are. It's, <laughs> right. it's in front of the cameras that they are pooping on yeah. <laughs> because it yeah. stinks. Yeah. Most most things are terrible. Yeah. And they always have been. Yeah. We just have a lot more of everything now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But I certainly wish that yeah. we could go to the movie theater and have that communal experience. Yeah. Because the movie theater felt like the theater. I know. Where I, you'd see some great drama or great, com great comedy. We alongside watched, other people. We watched Tootsie the other night again. Yeah. Is there better comedy that come I along know. in 40 years? 40? That movie is 40 is it years really? old. Oh my is there God. even a chance that that would be made today? Yeah. Not even. Yeah. It would have to be some gross out humor. Mm -hmm. There's not a speck of that in that movie. Right. There's barely a dirty joke in that movie. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then there'd be all the issues about who's playing this person dressing up like a woman. And is, yeah. is that, uh, oh my God. But damn, is it, it holds up really yeah. well. Because the writing is so great. Everything about it. God. Just works. I, I miss that. Yeah. I miss going to. Wouldn't you kill for that to, to have that, for that experience of a movie that's smart and really gut yeah. funny, like with Broadway laughs in it? We were, I watched, I watched a, uh, a I was reading this book by, um, oh, what's his name? Um, McCarthy, something McCarthy, uh, All the Pretty Horses. Yeah. And he. And he just has this one scene. It's like kind of in the West. It says things are becoming modernized. And there's just this one scene of him walking in, this young kid walking into a theater. It's very small. It's maybe two paragraphs. But he just comes into this theater and he talks about the red cushy uh, carpets on the steps <laughs> and the gold uh, handrails. Magic. And getting your ticket, yeah. going up to the balcony, yeah. sitting and looking at all the other people below, yeah. having the thing come on. And... I couldn't believe how it hit me. Like that thing, that magical escape from the world that you got to go and participate in a theater to see a film. Yeah. Like, I, I can't tell you the last time I went to a theater. 
these welcome to things old people say. <laughs> right? This is like a Yeah, but it was like, magical. But kids, kids don't know what they're missing. No, and I know. Don't, I mean, I think they'll have it this summer when the new Tom Cruise yeah. uh, Maverick comes out. Yeah. Because that's going to be a communal experience. And mm-hmm. everything I'm hearing about it is mm-hmm. terrific. Like it really delivers on what it's supposed to do yeah so maybe that'll be nice if covid be... some new strain doesn't come and kill that for us too <laughs> i know but i hope that yeah i hope that comes back because every one of those experiences even if it's this big you know 300 million dollar blockbuster yeah it'll get people going again it'll get people yeah. like, get them excited about going to a theater if you're a teenager i yeah. mean sure you've got us your parents may have a 60 inch th- thing with great sound in the living room that you can like we've created these little places to watch yes great i mean it's all high def it's all looks great yeah but the one flaw is that your parents are there (laughs) there's always going to be a need (laughs) for the guy to take the girl to the movies there's always going to be that need yeah right yeah to to you don't need your dad walking in chewing on some popcorn what are you guys watching (laughs) it's not a date I mean, Netflix and chill is an expression. We know what that means, but it's not the same. No. People want to go out. Exactly. Away from the parents. (laughs) Go. I know. Live your life, people. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need, get out of it. We need movies. We need, it's like a, it's a, it's a basic human need. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Restaurants and you need movies. Both are in danger. I know. Right, I know. What do you? What's that? What's what's that? Uh, yeah, what's that you hearing? Because so, so, I know you're very tapped in. You know, I think you know everybody that owns a restaurant in Los Angeles. I love the I love the community. I think it's a great community. I think it's a an artistic community. Uh-huh. I think it's an art form like any other. Yeah, and I'm here to support the arts. Yeah, right. right. So I'm stupid enough to invest in restaurants. That's how much I love them. Yeah, and and I feel like. It's the fabric of society. Mm-hmm. It's where we socialize. It's our social life. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's like traveling for the night. Yeah. Or the day if yeah. you go right. I just came from Republic lunch. Uh-huh. Spectacular. Yeah. It was you know you forget everything you're doing and yeah. concentrate on how delicious and fun this is. Yeah. Seeing the people around you. But. COVID hit restaurants hard. Hard. And we need a bailout for the restaurant industry not the giant corporate restaurants Uh like the white tablecloth places that only rich people can afford yeah or the giant corporate chain Mm -hmm. restaurants that poor people are forced to eat at yeah it's everything in between all the restaurants we like the The one and two places the the ethnic places right And, and i mean this is a giant you know that the restaurant industry employs more people than any other industry in america other than the government whoa that's big but the thing i keep hearing is yep. that all these people that own these places can't get people to yes work i don't know what that story they can't is. get the staffing I right don't i maybe covid was like a crazy wake-up call to people uh-huh. that they're not gonna do what they don't like to do anymore right That could be part of it. Mm -hmm. Another part of it could have been maybe too much money went in their pocket while they weren't working. I heard that a little bit. I don't know if that's 100% true. You would think that would start tapering off at this point. Yes. Right? Like how much? But but on the other side, maybe it was because I know some students who got, who just had like jobs for a short time and they're college students who got like, you know, 25 grand. And when, if I was at that age, I could have lived off that for a <laughs> good long time. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So maybe they did. But you, I mean, it's got to come back, doesn't it? But is, you're, hearing that, you're, hearing that, you're hearing that? You're hearing that? You're hearing that? The people are shut. having trouble staffing? Of course. Comedy Magic Club said they're opening up. Yeah. Uh, they've been the last one to open. And uh, they said in the email, uh, you know, we're going to be doing just a certain amount of days and stuff. And. They said, if you know any cooks, send them our way. Yes. Like they don't, they can't find the staff to open yeah. seven days a week. I, it's honestly p- completely puzzling to me. What are those yeah. people going to do for money? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to work. Everybody has to work. Yeah. And they're I fun jobs. They're it. great jobs. Or are we also short-sighted now? Mm. Like the government. 
Mm -hmm. where we just grab it now and screw later, like the studios, like the networks, like everybody else. Human nature, maybe. Human nature, just get, grab it now, screw later. Well, when you think like that, you do screw later. Yeah. There is no later. No, right. If you're short-sighted. It's the trouble with everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is... What is Russia thinking long term <laughs> with what they're doing? I know. Have I they know. thought beyond the immediate? That's the most puzzling part of that, isn't it? Yes. When not every, to when, get political. When you read it, the articles and you're just like, what is, what, what's what, the end? What's the end game here? Why are they doing here? this? What, what's the cruelty? The, yeah. The hateful. What are you breeding? What are you doing? Yes. So people have some long term goals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to yeah. your children. Back to Putin just for a quick sec. The, Please. He's not young. You know what I mean? Like, whatever damage he does, like, he's not going to even live long enough to see, like, what? Like, why? Well, we must consider that he's crazy. Yeah, that's the most unsettling thing we have to consider. I heard also, you know, I read reports that he's very sick, maybe with cancer, and I don't, I don't know. I saw but, that. I saw some picture with him with, like, a know. blanket over him. Okay. Like, I know. I'm, I know. And then you read that and you're like, is that good for us or bad for us? By the way, the doctor's going to perform that surgery. He has a big role in this world. Oh, how about that? Well, you can give us a good perspective on that. You went to Russia. I did. Famously. Oh, they're back in the news now. Famously. Uh, to see if you could, uh, if they could do their own version of Raymond. Called Everybody Loves Kostya. <laughs> They asked, invited me to come and help them. I said, I would if I could film the whole thing. Right. It's a movie called Exporting Raymond. Right. You can see it on iTunes and Amazon now. It okay. was on HBO for a long time. Yeah. But it's like a cult <laughs> classic because it's really funny. My, my family thinks it's the funniest movie ever made because of how much I suffer. You were suffering. Well, I was invited to a place that once I got there, and it was no small thing to go to Moscow yeah. for me. This was 10 years ago. Uh, I go to a place where I think I'm an expert in the subject. That's why they invited me, right? right. They, and just I, to be clear to the listeners, yes. they, they wanted to make their own version of Raymond. That's right. And put it on TV for real. For real. And they, and wanted they brought my help. you in yes. to produce. They said they wanted my help. <laughs> and it turns out they didn't want my help. I got there, I traveled all that way, and they didn't want my help. I think what they wanted was kind of my stamp of approval. Uh, and I was there as kind of a, a puppet. I don't know what I was. I don't know either, but the funniest part... But just, I kept trying. You did, but the funniest part was that there was no funny there. Like, they literally seemed like they didn't... They were very warm at the table and you like yeah. were eating with the family. Yeah. But as far... It was like bringing comedy to people who didn't know what comedy was i'm not judging because life is hard there like a a, a water pitcher would come to the table at every dinner Uh a big water pitcher that wasn't water (laughs) and they would drink it like water jeez tall water glasses full and they'd go through several pitchers and what i came to understand was they need that wow because life is hard right they even said when i said you know their style of comedy only they only had sketch shows right. as comedy, right. very broad, mm-hmm. very like like broader than vaudeville, right? Big, huge, crazy, clownish stuff. Yeah. And Raymond, we're trying to keep it real. We're yeah. trying to. We had one rule in the writers' room: could this happen? Right. That's all. Yeah. Just could this happen? Not that it wasn't exaggerated a little bit sometimes, but could this possibly happen in the real world? That was right. our motto. Right. And I went to a land where. Things are exploding. Things are giant phases. Well, wow, you know, like Jerry Lewis would be subtle. <laughs> right. Okay. Giant pies. Giant pie <laughs> fights. And, and I would say, I think you want the show to be relatable. Not to me, uh-huh. but to your own real Russian audience. Yeah. And they literally said to me, real life is terrible. Why would we put that on television? Whoa. This is supposed to be an escape. Jeez. So make it really big and funny. Right. And so I was trying to show them when it wasn't working for them, they weren't yeah. laughing either because you can't possibly laugh at this outrageous, gigantic performances that they were encouraging. Right. They just figured that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. So we're watching something of how it should be in our minds instead of genuinely laughing. And then we talked to them off 
stage. Yeah. They make jokes like you and they make and the things we laugh at, we all laugh at. Yeah. And that's universal. But for some reason there was a mindset. It must be like this. It right. must be the circus. Right. Very oh, frustrating man. to anyone trying to Yeah. But the whole point of the movie is listen, it's hard to get your idea across in your house. Right. You know, <laughs> to people who supposedly love you and and are on the same wavelength yeah. with you enough that you marry them. Yeah. <laughs> but you know Yeah. How many times in your house do you like I see this so clearly, it's so obvious. How do you not see this? How about when you try and recall things with your family? Yeah. Like you and your wife will talk about when the kids were little or something. Yeah. And you have no recollection. <laughs> either no recollection yeah. or a complete opposite yes. scenario in your head of what went down. Yes. Your wife is like, what? <laughs> That's right. And I'm going to say for the sake of my life, she's always right. Oh, I, I've learned just go along, get quiet and listen to what, it, it which way matter. the story doesn't goes. It doesn't matter if you're right. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's how it happens. You want to live? <laughs> you want supper? <laughs> and you know, in, in reality, she's probably, she probably is right. I'm sure. She was, she was much more into the details of all that stuff going on. She tells me on. stories about the birth of our son where <laughs> I, I come off very badly. Where she, where this, our boy came four <laughs> weeks early. So Whoa. I was like it, the Dick Van Dyke show where yeah. I did not know where my hat was. I, you know, it was like, yeah, 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 I yeah, don't yeah. know what is happening. And I ran downstairs to get the car. Uh -huh. Forgetting that my wife is having a baby and can barely walk. And I'm sitting in the car waiting for her. Because <laughs> I'm so Just literally out of the Flintstones. Yes, completely. <laughs> like, Could you help me? <laughs> so I'll never live that down. Yeah, no, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way you remember it the same way that 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 I I I I don't remember that until oh, you don't. she tells me and then <laughs> I, I have to admit it's not out of the realm of possibility. Of, of but I do down. remember driving like a maniac as yeah. fast as I could because I thought 4 weeks early something's wrong. Yeah, so yeah. I was nervous and, sure. and, and driving and she said slow down. I'm I'm like wow. driving on Wilshire like a maniac. Wow. <laughs> like the French connection. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So when you see these stories unfolding of these the troubles that that seem like they're from another century that, yeah. of what's going on over there. Yeah. Is there your experience? Do you have a perspective of, of the mindset? Is there anything that you've, you have, is to there a lens admire, that you're seeing? You have to admire the, the Russian people and their leader. Mm -hmm. I'm, no, sorry. The Ukrainian, the Ukrainian people take that. Yeah. Back. <laughs> you have to admire the Ukrainian people and right. Zelensky the defiance it's how you wish you would be in such a situation right? yeah yeah but damn it those stories of what i'm hearing yeah what we're all hearing about these atrocities horrible these war crimes these horrible it's regular people even if you want to take over what are you doing yeah what is this torture rape murder slaughter slaughter of children booby trapping toys for children to find what are you doing yeah this is how you want to win and what are you winning and what do you get yeah what do you get so it makes no sense not to not to i don't even know i don't even think this is political it's just human it's just barbaric it's yeah. like the syria it's like you, yeah. you, you know, which is still happening I mean, this is a slow motion like i always think well what's that leader get at the end of the day you get i don't know waffle buildings but what i find in all my travels and this is a generality, is mm. that most people are so much better than their governments. Yeah. So the, I'm not even faulting the Russian people. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, Russian people here are being uh, uh, abused even uh -huh. by people who think, oh, you're Russian, you must be a jerk. Right. You must be a hateful murderer. Right. It's not them. Yeah. It's this one guy and his, and his uh, surrounding idiots. Yeah. There was... <laughs> Last night, just for fun, I checked out South Park. I haven't seen South Park in a while. It's so funny. Always funny. Damn it. They're so good. How many years? 30? 25 seasons. This is crazy. 25. It's so good. And I was just, and I was like, oh, they had a Russian one. Uh -huh. I was just like, what are those guys talking about? And they had this very funny episode of just what you're saying about they're attacking like little butters is in dressage <laughs> the horses yeah and there's a russian kid who has a horse also yeah and the parents are all flipping out that uh, anti-russian like it's a little kid on yeah, a horse right, of course. so the whole thing goes off from there that 
all the baby boomers are craving the old days of when Russia was the enemy <laughs> and they could all go back to being like in the 1980s. And oh, yeah, so well, funny. Those guys. They, they're, could they're, you imagine doing something for 25 seasons? Well, they, they hit a great formula, didn't they? God. Take that, like they found a way, if the animation is cheap enough yeah. and easy enough, we could do it that week. Right. We could talk about the events of the week and actually do a cartoon yeah. of the week. Insane. And, 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 and put it into our scenario. God. And they've done so many that are world class, brilliant God. satires. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, they just came, it was like two years ago, or it was before the pandemic. Yeah. Right before the pandemic, when they all of a sudden were having like one of their best years. Yes. 22 years. I know, in, incredible. It's incredible. And they were just so relevant. They were yeah. so on point. Yeah. They were just so, God, those minds. You still have to break story every week. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. I don't either. Well, geniuses. Geniuses. God. Bless them. Bless them. I wonder what they get for lunch. <laughs> I hope whatever they want. They came to the set once of Raymond. They wanted they? to see what a real sitcom, like how it worked. And then I think they were going to do one. I think they did uh, something like making fun of George Bush. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah. Like a live action thing. Right, right, right. Oh, and they came in a and And then they made the, probably the funniest Broadway show of all time. Oh, my God. You saw it? Oh, yeah. Did you see the original? The Book of Mormon? Yeah. Uh no. Josh Gad. And no, it was right after Josh left. Holy cow. Is that, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> is there anything funnier than that? I remember sitting behind, I think Regis Philbin was still alive. <laughs> he had a drink in his hand. You're allowed to bring the drinks in. He yeah. was sitting with Lorne Michaels in uh -huh. front of me at the Broadway theater. And there's a show, there's a song in the show <laughs> yeah. uh, called F You God. Right. Except they don't say F, they say the word. And the whole song is about how bad their life is and... <laughs> They're saying F you God. Right. <laughs> and it is the most profane, <laughs> shocking for, and outrageously hilarious, like crying, crying. laughing at how wrong this yeah. song is, right? Yeah. The opposite of woke. Yeah. <laughs> and at intermission, Regis turns to us and he goes, what's so funny? I don't understand why everyone's laughing. Really? What's funny about this? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because it was so... You have to understand that... That's the, hilarious. The joke of the writer's room... Yeah. When people say, you can't say these things, mm -hmm. right? Is, yes, we know you can't say these things. That's what's funny about it. <laughs> right. The shock of saying it is what's funny about yeah. it. Yeah. Now, there's stuff that truly isn't funny. Yeah. And everyone has their line. But once you're in on... That joke right. that you should not say "f you God" right. in a theater in on Broadway, <laughs> filled with Midwestern you, families, you can't stop laughing. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? That's what's really lacking. It's the source, not considering the source that yes. that we're all in on this. There's together. no room anymore yeah. for, I don't know, fun. Yeah. I want to say <laughs> no. That's really what it is. I don't get it. There yeah, are people who get canceled for saying the word that you should never say in an example of why you shouldn't say it. <laughs> say the word, I know. And then they get canceled. <laughs> I know. It's really a make land of make-believe. This is why, yeah. and I'm bringing it back because I know we've got to wrap in a second, <laughs> uh, why your show is so great. Oh, thanks. Really, because there's, there's a freedom to it. There's a freedom to the travel. You can say what you want to say. You can be with, you can, you're just celebrating. It's, it's very celebratory. And I think that's why I, that would be Tom Papa's reason for why it's going into the fifth and sixth season. Thank you. You're I, the best. I just, I just love the life I get to have and the people I get to meet. Yeah. You included. Yeah. And I'm just so grateful. I'm still thinking about the bagels I had at your house. Come on. You're welcome anytime. Oh, my God. Courage bagels, everybody. I haven't, ba haven't beaten it. It's been a, about a year. I haven't yes. beaten it. And I've been everywhere. Haven't beaten those bagels yet. Awesome. Yeah. All right. More lunches. Best. All right. More lunches. We got it, Aaron. 
All right, everybody. There's the big show. The great Phil Rosenthal. A big thank you. A big thank you to all of you out there. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you get all of the... Uh, make sure you subscribe so you get all of these shows. We've really been killing it lately. We've been having great guests and they let, just let them accumulate. And then when you're popping them into your device when you're on the road, whatever you're doing, you'll, uh, you'll never miss one. And also tell a friend and keep expanding the community. It's... Uh, it keeps getting more fun for me. I hope it is for you as well. All right. Thank you, Phil. We'll see you all next time. Enjoy your life.